तो पेशाबी जो है so hello everyone uh, so i am going to talk about uh, a new reachability analysis approach for nonlinear systems that uses uh, intersection of union of sets so it addresses an important problem in piecewise linearization of uh, the issue of optimizing piecewise linearization uh, and uh, uh, the uh, the problem is that uh, when we try to optimize uh, piecewise linearization then the problem uh, the optimization problem is a multi objective optimization problem which won't have uh, a single optimal solution but uh, multiple pareto optimal solutions so the approach i'm going to discuss is going to leverage uh, different uh, pareto optimal solutions by using intersection of union of sets and uh, the, that's uh, the algorithm that i'm going to discuss today oops it's not moving forward Yeah, sure. So the outline of my talk is as follows. First, I'm going to discuss what is a nonlinear system and a reachable set of the nonlinear system. Then I will uh, define the problem of approximating the reachable sets, time-dependent reachable sets of uh, a nonlinear dynamical system. Uh, then I'm going to uh, uh, give a brief review of uh, piecewise linear equation-based reachable and uh, discuss its drawback. Then I will uh, discuss the motivation for using intersection of union of sets. Next, I will uh, discuss uh, my algorithm of using reachability analysis, uh, algorithm using intersection of unions. And finally, I will uh, discuss the experiments. So, firstly, uh, what is a nonlinear system and reachable set? So, a nonlinear differential equation is uh, given by the equation here, where x is a multidimensional vector so xt uh, represents uh, uh, the value of the multiple dimensional vector as a function of time so uh, the uh, so nonlinear differential equation basically represents an equation which uh, where xt is a function that solves this following equation so this uh, and f is uh, so there are uh, some assumptions uh, here, uh, we consider f to be a smooth function and u to be a piecewise continuous function. Uh, in general, we can consider, consider u to be a measurable function, but uh, to keep it simple, let's say u is a piecewise continuous function. Now, a trajectory of, uh, so given a, any smooth function f and a set of inputs u, let's say uh, u is a, any given set uh, in the Euclidean space, then we say that x is a trajectory of this tuple f comma u, which I call as a nonlinear system, if uh, the below equation is satisfied for all t greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So example of a nonlinear uh, system is a quadrata here. Uh, so it is diff uh, so this is uh, taken from the ARC uh, 2020 competition. You can see a number of uh, differential equations here, uh, a number of formulas defining the derivatives of uh, the state variables. Uh, this is a 12 dimensional differential equation. So uh, the variables on the left-hand side define the components of the state of the system. And uh, uh, so, uh, and uh, the derivatives of the components of the state of the system and the formulas on the right hand side uh, describe how the derivatives are in terms of the state variables. So, the reachable set of the nonlinear system at any given time is the collection of all points that can be reached by the trajectories of the system at that point for any given input in a given bounded set U. So that is uh, defined as, so if I uh, take the double F, uh, uh, the smooth function of the vector, which is the vector field, the vector field F and the input U to be the nonlinear system S, then I denote the reachable set at any given time T originating from an initial set Psi as R subscript S psi comma T. Now I'm going to define uh, the problem of approximating the reachable sets of nonlinear systems. Let's say we're given uh, a nonlinear system f comma u 
an initial set psi and uh, to keep uh, to keep the problem simple let us say u is a box and uh, the a set of initial conditions is also a box in the state space and we're given a sequence of time intervals 0 t1 till tn and then we have a direction vector v is a vector in uh, the, uh, the n dimensional space where n is the dimension of the state space so we consider the problem of computing directional bounds on the ritual circuit, which means that uh, at any given time, or uh, in any in each of the time intervals, ti ti plus one, we have to compute uh, the maximum value of the projection of the traject uh, of any trajectory of the nonlinear system, such that uh, the input is bounded within the given uh, box u, and uh, the initial uh, point. Oh, oh, sorry, uh, I just missed to mention the initial condition here. So that's a typo. So here uh, we also want the initial condition, which is x0, to be contained within uh, the, uh, the set psi. So uh, yeah, so, that, uh, so that's the problem I'm going to uh, consider. I'm going to uh, do a brief review of uh, piecewise linearization be before motivating uh, the reason for using intersection of unions. Let us consider uh, a simpler problem of reachability analysis of uh, linear systems. A linear system is a special case of a nonlinear system where the vector field F is linear. It is given by uh, an equation of the kind AX plus BU plus C, where A is a matrix and B is a matrix and C is a constant. And uh, linear, the reachability analysis of linear systems can be solved very efficiently using a set representation called genotopes, which is now like a very popular approach in uh, uh, this uh, nonlinear uh, enrichability analysis. So a genotope is defined as uh, uh, G times the set of points G times epsilon plus C, where epsilon is a vector which a multidimensional vector which is bounded within uh, the unit box. And C is the center of the genotope. This is uh, a special case of a polytope. And the reason for using genotopes are they're, uh, they're efficient, uh, the linear transformations of genotopes can be efficiently computed. But I'm not going to discuss uh, the technical details about genotopes in this talk. Uh, it's just enough to know that genotopes, using genotopes, you can compute the reachable sets of linear systems very efficiently. And uh, the algorithm, uh, one of the first algorithms that had been proposed. Uh, for computing reachable sets of linear systems is uh, by Antoine Girard. And uh, so uh, he proposed an algorithm to approximate the reachable sets of nonlinear systems using genotopes. Um, and uh, the citation is given below. Now, let us, so because uh, we can compute uh, the reachable sets of uh, nonlinear systems efficiently using uh, of linear systems very efficiently. So, in order to compute the uh, reachable sets of nonlinear systems, one procedure would be to approximate the nonlinear system by linear system. So, that is called linearization, which I'm going to discuss now. Let us consider um, a nonlinear system S and a box uh, in the state space omega and an input set U. Let us define uh, the Jacobian with respect to the uh, state variable at the center of uh, the boxes as A and the J Jacobian with respect to the inter uh, input variable um, at the center of the boxes as B. Now, uh, let us consider a function G as defined below with uh, where the value of B, where G is a linear function, the value of B is bounded within uh, the Taylor uh, bounds given above, where Taylor f comma u comma omega is uh, the box that I have. So the Taylor f comma u comma omega is computed using uh, interval arithmetic and uh, the uh, and some uh, um, uh, well-known uh, results in calculus. Uh, so the middle Hess defines is the Hessian of uh, the vector field at any point x prime comma u prime in the where x prime belongs to the box and u prime belongs to the input. 
and similarly x and u are also belongs to the box and input respectively so we can compute a box approximation of the function given here using interval arithmetic so that uh, i assume interval arithmetic here now let us consider that uh, for a given initial set psi which is contained inside omega for all time points between 0 to t the reachable set is of that um, of psi is contained inside omega minus the border i mean it, it is contained contained inside the interior of omega and then let us define a linear system uh, where uh, the vector field is given by the linear function g and the input is now not just u but it is extended like it is given by the cartesian product of u with uh, the taylor error so the taylor error captures the bounds on the v given the function above then we have a result uh, that uh, the reachable set of the linear a uh, nonlinear system at the point uh, at time t will be a subset of the reachable set of the not, uh, linear system at time t so because it's a subset then we can soundly over approximate the reachable sets of uh, the nonlinear system using reachable sets of the linear system so this is a very standard uh, result which can be used uh, which can be de deduced using uh, taylor's theorem so the important point to note here is that the Taylor error that I have in here uh, that is highlighted is proportional to the size of the neighborhood around in which I am uh, doing the approximation. So this means that if we want to reduce the Taylor error, we want to reduce the size of the reachable set. So that's where the motivation for piecewise linearization comes in. In piecewise linearization, it's rough performing reachable set around the whole uh, uh, around the whole uh, set psi we try to divide the set psi into smaller pieces and perform linearization in the neighborhood of each smaller subset so uh, okay before going into piece linearization this is just uh, a review of how we can use the linearization to do non linear reachability since uh, uh, because of the theorem i have here the, Where I say that R psi, uh, this is a subset of the linear system. This means that in order to compute uh, the reachable set of the nonlinear system uh, at any given time t, first I need to find a safe neighborhood of the uh, nonlinear system within which all the within which I assume that all the points and uh, of the reachable set of the nonlinear system lie, and then in that neighborhood, in order to compute uh, the reachable set of the nonlinear system at any given time point, I can use the uh, I can uh, compute a genotopic approximation of the linear uh, system uh, using Jira's algorithm, or we can also use other algorithms. Uh, so th th that that is not going to matter. But the thing to note here is that the Taylor error, uh, this kind of approximation will have an uh, uh, error which is uh, the Taylor error that is proportional to the size of the neighborhood in which I'm doing the approximation. Since the neighbor, uh, the size of the neighborhood depends on the size of uh, the reachable set, so it is automatically uh, uh, proportional to the, uh, not exactly proportional, but it increases, uh, it's kind of directly correlated to the size of uh, uh, the reachable set. So in order to reduce the size of the reachable set, what we can do uh, in order to reduce the linearization error, what we can do is we can uh, divide the reachable set into smaller pieces and perform uh, linearization in the neighborhood of each smaller subset uh, and propagate each smaller subset independently. So this is what is called piecewise linearization. And, uh, and uh, the interesting thing here is uh, when we're doing this piecewise linearization, uh, it the piecewise linearization maps convex sets to non-convex sets, which is good because in principle, uh, the, the reachable sets of nonlinear systems tend to be non-convex with uh, uh, very complex geometric shapes. So uh, that kind of illustrated in this figure here. But the problem with piecewise linearization is the curse of dimensionality. If uh, let's say if we want to, we want to reduce the 
linearization error below a threshold, then it so happens that the number of pieces required to reduce the linearization below a threshold can increase exponentially in the dimension uh, for a fixed threshold. So this could be due to uh, complexity theory reasons. Uh, it, it happens, uh, it so happens that computing accurate bounds on nonlinear functions is an NP hard problem. And because of this, uh, uh, this actually uh, is related to the exponential increase in the number of pieces uh, in piecewise linearization to uh, reduce the linear, uh, to adequately reduce the linearization error. So now I'll discuss uh, the motivation for using intersection of unions. So uh, I had uh, explained why piece, uh, the uh, drawback of piece resolution is a curse of dimensionality that we cannot arbitrarily reduce the linearization error. So uh, the number of pieces tend to blow up exponentially. So to tackle this, what we can do instead is fix the number of pieces in piecewise linearization. So once we fix the number of pieces, then we will need to optimize the way we are uh, uh, constructing the pieces. That is, we are dividing the reachable set. So uh, this leads us to an optimization problem with, uh, of how do we divide the reachable set in a way that minimizes the Taylor error. But the problem of optimizing the division of the reachable set so as to minimize the Taylor error is actually a multi-objective problem. It is not a single objective problem because the Taylor error that I had defined earlier is a multi-dimensional set. So the projection of the Taylor along, error along different di uh, directions uh, will have uh, different functions. And th those different functions can have different optimal or Pareto optimal solutions that I'm going to explain now. Let's say I have a direction Q in a uh, multi-dimensional sp uh, state space. And uh, for each direction vector Q, let us define the projection of the Taylor error, the supreme, uh, su the supreme value of the projection of the Taylor error. So when I project the Taylor error along the direction Q, I get an interval. And then I'm going to compute the supreme value of the Taylor error. Now, uh, the Tail, the maximum of the Taylor error along all, I want to minimize the maximum of the Taylor error, error for all the divisions. So that's the optimization problem that I have. So uh, that's given by uh, uh, the uh, founder here. But it so happens that for different projection directions Q, the solution will be different. So this is uh, the, uh, the uh, so the, this is the uh, problem of Pareto optimization where uh, I, I won't have a single unique solution for every uh, projection direction. I have multiple solutions for different projection direction. Uh, for example, uh, let us consider the case of the quadcopter, where uh, uh, the dynamics along uh, the derivative of along the W axis is uh, given here and uh, along the phi axis. So uh, both derivatives are different functions. So if I want to minimize the projection of uh, of the Taylor error along the W axis. So I'm going to project uh, uh, with the val uh, value of the Q where uh, uh, it, uh, the, the component is one when W uh, for uh, the va value of the W axis. Then uh, I will have, uh, okay, I took a particular initial set uh, for, uh, uh, for kind of the, uh, for the analysis. And then I have a division vector like this. So the division vector here defines the number of divisions along each axis. So we can see that for, a one, uh, for the same initial set, the division vector that uh, minimizes the, uh, the projection of the Taylor error is different along different axis, uh, along different directions. So here, uh, uh, so that, that's highlighted uh, here. So uh, this is uh, this is the issue of uh, multi-objective optimization of uh, 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 reachable set. So to solve the problem, I'm going to introduce the idea of uh, intersection of unions reachable reanalysis. So since I don't have a single unique optimal solution for piecewise linearization, the, uh, so to, uh, so in order to improve the accuracy, what we can do is we can combine different solutions 
and leverage the access of different solutions. To do so, you use uh, the approach of intersection of unions as follows. Let us say I have a box, a reachable set, and I have for different directions, I have multiple different ways of dividing the box. So let's say these are three different kinds of divisions for, uh, for uh, 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 minimizing the linearization error along different directions. Now, using uh, piecewise linearization, I can uh, different piecewise linearization, so I can compute the reachable set in three different ways as illustrated in this diagram. When I, next, I can intersect all the sets and then I will get what is called intersection of unions. So th that is the set in the middle. So that set tends to be much smaller than the actual set uh, resulting from uh, different piecewise, different kinds of piecewise, uh, piecewise linearizations. So uh, I'm going to give a brief overview. I'm, I'm going to be, uh, get into the technical details of my approach. So uh, my approach has two steps. First, I propose a set representation for over approximating the intersection of unions of sets. And that representation is intersection of unions of genotopes. It is given as uh, the formula here, where uh, I take the union of different genotopes and I take the intersection of those unions. And then I developed an algorithm to compute the forward reachable sets of this intersection of unions genotope using multiple piecewise linearizations, which include Pareto optimal solutions of uh, piecewise linearization. Uh, by Pareto optimal solutions, is that I take the optimized, uh, optimized divisions for different projection directions, and I'm going to intersect uh, the uh, unions of genotopes, uh, uh, unions of genotopes resulting from different. Uh, uh, kinds of uh, projections. So what is the advantage of using intersection of unions and in, uh, reachability analysis? So the advantage is uh, that intersection of unions leverages the accuracy of multiple Pareto optimal piecewise linearizations to uh, in reachability analysis. Now I'll uh, get into the experiments. So this is uh, the first model is a two-car platoon. So this is adapted from the uh, paper given the citation. Uh, in, in the paper, uh, the paper actually proposes a single uh, car, but I extended it to a platoon of uh, two cars, which uh, uh, follow each other. And uh, the combination of uh, the dynamics is uh, a 12-dimensional system, which is coupled. Uh, so I then I also consider another model uh, from the arc competition which is the quadcopter model. And uh, uh, I have increased the angles and uh, for the initial conditions, I've increased the angles and the angular velocities uh, so that I have much larger linearization error and it's good for uh, uh, testing purposes. And uh, the third model is uh, a platoon of four unicycle models that I have developed. And uh, this is the model I had introduced in uh, the last talk. Uh, so this is also a 12 dimensional system with a large, uh, with high non linearity coming from the trigonometric functions and also the inverse functions. So the first experiment I perform is compare uh, the accuracy of using multiple optimal uh, ways of dividing the reachable set, multiple optimal solutions to the accuracy of using a single way of uh, dividing the reachable set. To do so, what I consider, uh, I compared with another algorithm, uh, a modification of my algorithm where I replace uh, multiple objective functions with a single objective function. And that objective function is a normalized linearization error along the divisions. So uh, uh, the normalized linearization error, the infinity norm of the normalized linearization error on the divisions. And uh, okay, uh, the another, uh, so, and another experiment which I did is compare with other state-of-the-art -art algorithms, which include the Taylor model, conservative linearization, uh, and polynomial genotopes. The Taylor model uh, was implemented in Flowstar, while conservative linearization and polynomial genotope is implemented in Cora. Uh, so for these two experiments, here are the results. So, um, as you can see in the graph, uh, the blue line, uh, depicts uh, the bounds for the IEO genotope. So 
you can clearly see that the bounds with the IEO generator is much smaller than uh, the bounds with other approaches. And uh, it also beats the single objective optimization problem. And therefore, it means that using multiple solutions, multiple objective functions is uh, for optimization is better than using a single objective function. Uh, again, for the quad corporate uh, model, I have similar results. Uh, the polynomial generator comes close, but uh, it doesn't uh, uh, do better than uh, the IEO generator approach. And then for the unicycle model as well, I have similar results. So uh, uh, here it is to note that uh, the accuracy of uh, the algorithm which, which I have compared are sensitive to the hyperparameter setting. So I cannot exactly say that uh, the, uh, the settings that I have used are the best possible settings. Maybe there are settings that do perform better, but uh, the experiments are just to illustrate that my method is sufficiently accurate compared to other approaches. Uh, and the settings I have taken are given here. And there are, uh, here are the compu uh, uh, comparison of the computation times. By doing the experiments, I try to tune the hyperparameters of other algorithms in a way that the computation times of those algorithms match the computation time of my algorithm. And you can see the computation times are uh, quite reasonable, like uh, they're less than two minutes in most cases. Now, in another experiment, I try to, I try to uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, see why, uh, I, I try to validate that using multiple unions uh, gives better approximation of the reachable set than giving, uh, uh, than using a single union. For this, <clears throat> I tried to plot the minimum number of intersections in the union that are required to compute the best possible uh, box approximation of the IEU. So uh, there is a way in which I can compute uh, the uh, 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 bounds on the, the intersection of union of genotopes. And for computing the bounds, I try to see uh, what are the minimum number of intersections that are required to compute the best possible approximation IAU? So as, as plotted in the graph, this number is always greater than one, which means that we need more than one genotope, uh, one union genotope in the uh, IAU genotope to compute the best possible bound. So this means that using more number of intersections increases the accuracy of approximating the reachable set. And finally, I, uh, uh, the final experiment is to see whether increasing the divisions increases accuracy. It clearly does, as you can see here. Here, eta is the log of the number of divisions. So eta equal to three means the number of divisions are eight. So, oh, I, uh, okay, this is, this is for the unicycle platoon model, or this is for car models, right? I haven't mentioned that. And this is for the quadcopter model. I've taken 16 divisions and order is the order of the genotope. And uh, this is for the unicycle plateau model. I, tr I try to find the lower bound and uh, uh, the highest uh, number of divisions I've taken is uh, 16 again. And again, increasing divisions increases accuracy. So in summary, I introduced a new approach of Leveraging the accuracy of multiple parato optimal piecewise linearizations uh, instead of a single piecewise linearization in rich, uh, to improve the accuracy of uh, reachability analysis. I developed a new set representation. I did, uh, kind of uh, developed a new set representation called intersection of unions of genotopes with an algorithm to compute the forward reachable sets of this IAU genotope uh, uh, in, uh, in case of uh, nonlinear systems. And uh, then I perform experiments on three high dimensional uh, examples to demo demonstrate the efficiency of this approach and uh, compared uh, the efficiency with other state of the art approaches. Um, again, that's the end of now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arvind, for this very interesting talk. Um, do you have some questions? I have a question. 
Um, so very interesting talk, I agree. Um, why why are zonotopes uh, particularly useful for that? Because I, as far as I know, they are not really, I don't know if, if intersection and union of zonotopes is not so simple. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, one particular drawback of genotopes is definitely that we cannot uh, intersect uh, genotopes uh, to compute a, a better approximation of, but then computing the, uh, uh, in IAU, we use multiple uh, genotopes, right? So mm -hmm. uh, computing forward reachable sets of genotopes is very fast. Yeah. Now, in case of polytopes, uh, the edge representation of polytopes, I can, they have the advantage that I can uh, take the intersections easily. That's mm -hmm. true. But mm -hmm. then computing the forward reachable sets is a major drawback. So that mm -hmm. is the first approach that came to my mind, like using polytopes, but it's very, very less scalable uh, yeah. because it requires linear programming. Uh, and uh, I, I mean, uh, there's nothing ruling out the possibility that we should not use genotopes, uh, uh, polytopes and all, but it requires a lot of work. Uh, at this point and is a real uh, is a really challenging problem mm -hmm. uh, the challenge is the scalability yeah but uh, uh, that said it is uh, since uh, it doesn't mean that since we are not able to take intersection of genotopes it doesn't improve the accuracy it does because i have a way of uh, taking the box approximation although it is not a very good approximation still it does well in the sense that i'm going to come uh, so in a, i can discuss the paper where uh, instead of just taking the box approximation while uh, taking the sections, I also take uh, uh, store the previous uh, IEO genotope representation. So mm -hmm. using the previous IEO genotope representation uh, as well as the current box approximation, I, uh, I can kind of reduce the abstraction error. Okay. So it's something like that, mm -hmm. kind of a couple. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it, it will be very interesting to use polytopes, but uh, at the moment I don't have a way of scaling up uh, polytopes or the use of polytopes. Yeah, no, I was mm -hmm. not suggesting that. I, I agree with you that polytopes will not be scalable. Yeah. But I was very surprised that zonotopes, you could manage to, to intersect and take the union of zonotopes. That is. Uh, so there are technical details here, and so uh, the way I take the uh, intersections is by doing box approximations. But doing box approximation will introduce an uh, abstraction error. So to control the box approximation, uh, to control the abstraction error, I am going to store the previous representation, mm -hmm. and then I'm, uh, I, I have a way of minimizing the number of intersections. Like I use a heuristic to minimize the number of intersections based on measure of each uh, union genotope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, something okay. like that. I can share the paper if you're interested. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe a, another question. So, are these intersections of unions? Are they? Do they converge to the true reachable set? So, if you take more and more intersections. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. So, any more questions? No? So my question was, um, if you take more and more intersections, do you have some kind of convergence to the true reachable states? Uh, theoretical result about uh, more and more intersections. Uh, no, it doesn't depend on, uh, so the, no, it, the convergence happens through more and more unions, not more and more intersections. Or, or that, yeah. Uh, the reason we are taking, uh, we need to take intersections here is because we are fixing the number of un, uh, divisions in the union. Mm -hmm. uh, that's because in high dimensions, I cannot increase the unions arbitrary. That, that, that's the whole uh, uh, reason for doing the IAU reachability. We cannot increase unions arbitrarily. So mm -hmm. if I fix the un uh, number of divisions, then how am I supposed to optimize? Because I have multiple optimal solutions. I don't have a single optimal. It's a Pareto optimization mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, I have a question, but I, I, probably, I probably missed the answer. So when you generate the box, the zonotopes, 
uh, and before you, you take the union, how do you choose how many zonotopes you are going to generate? So you show the picture with some different possibilities of uh, splitting the state space. Yeah, okay, you want me to go to picture? Yes. Uh, so that has to be user de defined. Uh, de uh, so user defined in the sense, it depends on the computation, okay. uh, computational uh, uh, resources that we have. If you have more computational resources, we can go for more number of divisions. Uh, okay. So this is a heuristics right now. This is a heuristic that... Yeah. Uh... So this is a, a, like four divisions I'm showing the figure, yeah. Okay. And uh, so if it's not heuristic, it, it depends on the computational resources. Like if I have a smarter, comp uh, faster computer, I can take more divisions if it has. But nevertheless, the number of divisions will always be bounded by uh, the computational resources. I cannot have arbitrary number of divisions. So uh, you always take this type of division that is shown in this picture? Uh, no, 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 uh, no, oh. this is just an illustration. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the division vector comes from optimization. I, I have something. In, yeah. Uh, I was just uh, okay. Uh, probably yeah. I missed yeah. this part. Okay. So Thank here you. Uh, I, you can see uh, there are uh, along two different uh, projection directions. I try to find the division vector when I fix the number of divisions to be to uh, eight. I guess so four to is oh yeah it's sixteen. So the total number of divisions is sixteen. And mm -hmm. then I find to try try to find the division vector so along one direction. It says that I have two 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 all tools here in the division vector along another direction says, uh, uh, I have a different division vector. So that division vector, oh, uh, sorry, I, I missed, uh, because I'm kind of uh, covering the overview. So there is an optimization procedure, which tries to find this division vector along different directions. Okay. Okay. No, I think that uh, I get the, the idea from this picture. Uh, yeah, so okay. this was my actual, uh, okay. Oh, this is clear now, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Thanks a lot. I look forward to a uh, Julia implementation of this method. Yeah, it's it's on, on the underway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know that. Uh, <laughs> okay. So um, let's move on with the next, uh, well, thank, thank you again, Arvin. Yeah, and yeah, um, I'll stop. Thank you for the presentation. Um, we will share the slides um, afterwards.